Diana Martinez. I'm here with an inspiring Latina, Diana Tellison Torres. She is the executive director of the United Farm Workers Foundation. Hi, Diana. Thank you for taking on this interview. Um, we are capturing stories from inspiring Latinas, and we thought that you were a great fit because of your strong female leadership role in this field. Can you tell us a little bit about the United Farm Workers Foundation? Sure. So, the FW Foundation is a sister organization of the United Farm Workers Union. Um, so, being part of the farm worker movement, a lot of our work is focused on really empowering farm workers and other um, Latino immigrants. Um, so, much of our work is around immigration services, making sure that farm workers are advocating for themselves at the state, local, federal levels, and mm -hmm. um, really trying to come up with policies that will improve their lives. What inspired you to um, work in the immigration field? I really was interested in trying to do something larger um, that involved like policy, advocacy, systemic change. Um, and so during my fellowship at Coro in San Francisco, right after teaching, um, during Agriculture Week, one of those, you know, we went down to the Central Valley in our caravan with different um, folks who were in the program and we were interviewing growers and growers and growers and a bunch of different people about different issues in the water, etc. But no one was talking about farm workers. Mm. And so like on the last day... And it's agriculture. And it's agriculture. <laughs> and so I kept saying, you know, when are we going to talk to farm workers? Um, so we interviewed the UFW very shortly in Sacramento and other than that, you know, at the very end, we ended up um, going to a farm where I saw it so isolated, and I saw farm workers working in the fields, hunched over, mm -hmm. um, mainly women. Um, they were sitting in the machine, and there was dust that was just everywhere as the machine moved. And I, I remember seeing the women coughing, mm -hmm. and their faces were covered up. You could just see their eyes. And I remember asking the grower, because I was very curious, I wonder what they think about what their work is like. And so I asked him, can I, can we talk to some of the workers? No, no, let's, no. <laughs> yeah, so off limits. So I'm thinking in my head, what does he not want me to have them tell me, you know? So that is when I learned that farm workers don't have overtime because I was asking this girl, well, how long do the workers work in this condition where they're hunched over like this? I was in Mechan High School. I assumed none of this was going on anymore. Um, and so, and you know, when I heard, well, overtime is after 10 hours for farm workers. Really? Why is it different than others? And that curiosity um, and just sense of this is not at all just mm -hmm. or correct that the people who feed us are treated differently than other workers. You know, that, that evening when we were, we were deep thinking, I said, I'm going to go work for the UFW. <laughs> and, that, and that's what happened. I, I ended up working with the union. Um, and then about a year and a half or two um, after I started working with the UFW, working on immigration reform, um, I was asked to um, start the UFW Foundation. Wow. And at the time I was, I think about 30. <laughs> so fairly young, but very motivated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and just really enjoyed the aspect of the entrepreneurship of starting a new project for the farm worker movement that could impact many lives. And what did you guys start providing for them? Like, so you, you started the UFW Foundation. Um, and initially, were the services the same, or how has it grown? Um, well, initially, as I mentioned, I was working on immigration reform um, for the union. So mm -hmm. at the time, I was the field director, so I was talking a lot about our, our work on the issue of immigration reform. I was going to Washington, D.C. a lot. I was going around the country talking about our bill, generating support. Um, so when I started the UFW Foundation, you know, some of the research that we did is when when we pass immigration reform, it's a when, not if. <laughs> um, when we pass immigration reform, where are we going to send people? Mm -hmm. Because 
in rural areas, there aren't very many individuals who um, are credible legal service providers for immigration attorneys. Mm -hmm. Most tend to be in urban areas. It's not that lucrative to work in just affirmative immigration cases with low income folks. Um, and yeah, so we really saw that there was a huge need right. to be able to address where immigrants can go in rural areas to get the services that they needed um, for their immigration cases. And knowing that the majority of farm workers are undocumented, it was really important for us to become experts in immigration, mm -hmm. law and immigration service provision um, to be able to provide the type of support that was needed. And frankly, it was mainly notarios and other folks who were taking advantage of people that we were hearing about um, and continue to hear about. And, and so, you know, for the last, you know, since 2006 when we started the UFW Foundation, we really worked very closely with other organizations and collaborations to increase the infrastructure, the legal infrastructure that um, is accessible in the Central Valley and the Central Coast of California. And, you know, and, and we've made a lot of progress. We're not the only ones, and we're part of a collaboration of organizations that are now providing mm -hmm. that legal service provision. So that was a main goal, and we wanted to make sure that we had that legal infrastructure on the mm -hmm. ground. And the other main goal was also to ensure that farm workers, you know, that our constituents were part of the advocacy that was needed to change the system. And part of that is that, you know, farm workers have been excluded from federal laws. Mm -hmm. They've been excluded from the Fair Labor Standards Act. So over time, they didn't, you know, it's not provided to them. Um, so there, there are a lot of exclusions from the 1930s that were based on racist mm -hmm. ideas that we are combating today, and that is a reality. And so it is still our goal to continue to work on advocacy that changes that systemic, endemic exclusion of farm workers. Right now, where there are these compound abuses that people are experiencing, I mean, we're sure that that um, makes them feel like they're less powerful and that they don't have as much agency as they might have. Um, and so it looks like the UFW Foundation is really going in there and being a support system, letting people know that there are options for them and working with them to create new avenues too where they don't exist currently. Absolutely. And I think that that is the, the, the focus is to ensure that farm workers know that they are an essential part of their communities and of this nation and of the world. Mm -hmm. They are the individuals that are feeding this entire nation. And so the agency that they feel, the fact that um, we're taking farm workers to Washington, D.C., who have family members who are undocumented or parents who are undocumented and farm workers, um, the fact that they feel that they're able to communicate what their day-to-day -day is like, what the life of a farm worker and a farm worker family is like, and convey that they really want to talk about what solutions mm -hmm. Congress members can come together on. If we can come together and negotiate a bill with agribusiness, <laughs> then Congress members who are Republican and Democrat should come together and come up with a solution to you know, support the solution that, that we're working on. So I think that this is an exciting time. Um, so having, you know, I was right before Thanksgiving and after Thanksgiving, I spent two weeks in Washington, D.C. with farm workers and children of farm workers who also have worked in the fields during mm -hmm. the summertime. Um, and so it was, really incredible to hear their stories yeah. and be in a room with a congress member or with their staff and hearing individuals talking about their parents work and having to wake up at four in the morning 
take care of their siblings because the parents are going off to work and take them to school as children themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, these are compelling stories that have to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that you know farm workers were in the gallery watching the vote that happened in the house in December. You know, we were able during the you know all of the craziness of DC in, in December, we were able to get this House bill passed with Democratic support, progressive Democrats, centrist Democrats, mm -hmm. and including 34 Republicans. Wow. So, you know, that's unheard of. Um, so this is something that we know we need to move into the Senate and do everything that we can to make sure that we press the senators and Mitch McConnell and others to you know, to support the solution. Um, so we're the season for the crowd, so <laughs> we believe that it can certainly happen. Um, and we also know that there's strength and persistence. But this is really like the nitty gritty of what success looks like, um, where you're having this impact, this major impact, not only on this community, but really it's changing the nation in general in terms of changing how people think about certain issues and actually bringing these issues to the table themselves. And you said earlier that you couldn't believe that these things were happening and, you know, we really aren't aware of them. What are you looking forward to um, in the immediate future as your next success? Well, we're definitely looking forward to hopefully getting um, our bill passed through the Senate um, and, you know, getting it signed by Donald Trump, hopefully. Um, I think this, you know, we've been asked, why, why now? Why during the Trump administration? You know, the, when you're working with farm workers on a day-to-day, -day, whoever's in power, it doesn't matter to us um, whether it's Donald Trump or whether it was President Obama to push through what we know is needed on the ground. And so we are persistent and we're going to continue to fight for the needs of farm workers. And so if, if there, is a, there is an opportunity that we see here, that there's a possibility to get this through. Um, so, you know, having worked on the issue for 15 years, this is something that I would really like to, to happen in 2020. Um, and then also just making sure that we're doing everything possible to catch um, immigrants on the ground to get Latinos on the ground excited and motivated about participating um, in the election and voter engagement yeah. on a nonpartisan basis since we're, we are a nonpartisan organization is incredibly important. So the success of increasing the Latino vote is, is something that I foresee as well. Well, we have 32 million eligible Latinos who um, can participate in this upcoming election. Um, and I like what you said earlier, it's a Cisa Puede crowd, and so Cisa Puede go to the ballot boxes too, and Cisa Puede get this bill passed to the Senate. Absolutely. Yeah, and everyone's support would be much appreciated. So I think um, individuals on the ground, consumers who might not even live in rural areas, benefit from the work of farm workers. So any you know support that folks can provide is so appreciated. You can join us on Facebook um, and hear about our campaigns um, and you know participate when we ask for support and mm -hmm. contacting Congress members or senators, etc. So it's um, it's an exciting time and I think there is I I'm sensing um, especially this year this motivation to be part of change and that's what we're asking our Latino brothers and sisters to really engage and, and support. Well, I thank you to Anna for sharing all the great work from the UFW Foundation. Thank you, Karina. <laughs> Appreciate you interviewing me.